All right, so I got a really cool project to show you guys, which is building your own chat GPT or AI chat bot. So let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago, Facebook Meta launched their Llama AI source code, which allowed us to actually understand how it worked and how to use something like ChatGPT. But the problem was there was no weights or the model behind it, which means we only had the code, but we didn't have any other resources to actually operate the code. Fortunately for us, uh, somebody leaked the code in March, and then every day since the leak of the code, there has been progress on making this very functional. Now to jump into it, I'm gonna leave this article down in the description below if you wanna read it yourself, but it's very interesting. On February 24th of a couple, like three, four weeks ago, made it announced their Llama and got released. Uh, March 2nd, someone leaked the Llama model uh, via BitTorrent. So I'm not gonna leave a link for any of that, but you could probably Google and you'll find the BitTorrent for the Llama model leak. And then uh, Georgie, which is the code we're gonna be using, creates the Llama CPP or C++ file, which allows us to use the models and look at the time frame from March 2nd, March 10th, March 11th, someone actually used that model and ran it on a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs of RAM, which is very surprising because I needed a lot of RAM just to run this on my main PC, but four gigs of RAM, he was able to get it to go. March 12th, um, somebody was able to use this and put it on Node.js. March 13th, uh, it's just so quick. Look, you can even get it on an Android phone uh, on, on like within days. That's how fast this thing got released. And here's a little demo of how it looks like. Now, there are a couple of models out right now, which is the 7B, uh, 13B, 30B, and the 60B or 65B, which is the billions of parameters that you're allowed to get. So, so there, 7 billion parameters is much more like um, GPT-2, and the 13 billion parameters would be like GPT-3. And then I would say 30 billion parameters is like 3.5 and then 65 billion parameters is like GPT-4. You know, kind of more like that because the more parameters you have, the more responses you're gonna get, the more accurate it's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna be playing around with the seven billion parameter one just because all the other stuff takes much longer to uh, process and more memory, more CPU, like tons of other stuff. But going down the code for what Georgie has, I will show you what I was talking about. So if you take a look at this, uh, he also made a software where it will shrink the original size from 13 gigs to four gigs, which makes it a lot smaller. And I'm assuming that this process of shrinking it down actually took like 16 gigs of RAM for me just to run it on this computer. So I'm assuming he did this, the guy who put this on a Raspberry Pi 4 probably did this on another computer and just transferred over the miniature size version of the billions of parameters. But you do have the 7B, 13B, 30, and the 65B all in its different sizes and different parameter sizes. But yeah, we're going to be following these instructions on how to get this going. I also am going to leave a link to Simon Wilson's article because he leaves a lot of good information about how, uh, what this is, how much it works, uh, what it does, and actually instructions how to install this on a Mac M1 as well as a Linux PC, to be honest. But one of the things that he did mention, which I thought was really interesting is um, the difference between what we're doing right now and ChatGPT3 is that ChatGPT3 is tuned, which means our inputs are getting absorbed, they're recording it, and then they're tuning the models to have a better response every time somebody uses it, which the models that we are using are just like stagnant. It's not tuned. So you're going to get different types of responses. You're still getting responses from an AI, just the responses are not gonna be as complete or you have to ask it a different way many times to get the result that you want. Unlike ChatGPT, which is constantly being updated and tuned where we don't have that type of infrastructure to do. Now, being able to run an AI off a machine like this is pretty interesting in itself, but you do need uh, NVIDIA GPU or something with CUDA or something that could actually process this type of information. Because when I ran this test on a VM, it was very slow, not even worth running on a VM because I didn't have a GPU on there. All right, let's jump into it. First, what we're gonna do is a Git clone. Let me make this bigger so you guys could all see. Is that big enough? Uh, first, we're gonna Git clone this project. So I'm gonna grab that and go to downloads, Git clone, and I'm just gonna grab that. And I did dry run on this computer before, so I know it does work. I did originally install this on Ubuntu, but we are using Arch Linux on this machine, so we're gonna be fine. 
Uh, next thing that you're going to need to do is go into this and run a make. This is pretty quick. Uh, I could actually put more CPUs into making this, but it's not really needed. It takes a few seconds to run, so you could just take, keep an eye on the time, and you'll see what I'm talking about, how fast this is to compile and get everything up and going. Uh, next thing we need to do is make sure we have the models installed. So he would do list structure to the models. I have nothing, so ls models, and there's nothing there, but I do have it downloaded, so I'm gonna transfer that over. I do have the 7B, and I'm just gonna grab that, cut, go into here, go into models, and just paste it here. That's all you really need to do. Just paste the models in that folder. All right, once I'm done, and close this out, we need to install the Python pip torch numpy and um, sequential piece or something, sentence piece. Now I already did this and this takes a while. Actually this was longer than anything I had to do was install the, the resources to get uh, Python running to allow it to use torch. Mainly you could see it's using Nvidia CUDA, Nvidia CCL, it's a bunch of other stuff, but it does take a while to install this part, which I already have pre-done so you don't have to sit through that. And now we're gonna do Python three convert pth to ggml which i'm just following their instructions model 7b1 i've actually seen them use one or two i don't know what the difference is but i'm just sticking with the instructions and using one now this does take maybe three to four minutes and what it does it's it's converting the ptl file to ggml it's not shrinking or anything it's just converting it from one language to another language this way I could convert it. You're gonna also notice this is the part that takes 16 gigs of RAM or even more. Uh, I know it's using my swap because I put 16, I have 16 gigs of RAM in this machine. It's maxed out. And if I was to show swap on here, it would probably be eating up a couple of gigs of swap itself too. Fortunately, this is the only time it actually uses a lot of the RAM. Um, using the actual chatbot doesn't eat up that much resources, a lot more CPU and GPU versus using a lot of memory. This is the only process that takes a lot of memory because the whole thing's gotta be dumped into memory. Uh, also, when you're converting the 13B, you need more memory for that as well, and then the 65B and so forth and so forth for this process to happen. And this is one of the main processes to convert the models to a understandable state. All right, so now that we are done with this, all we have to do is run the next command, which is quant, quant size. I don't know how to say that word, but yeah. Run this command. 47B, and it will shrink this down to the 3.9 gigs that he's talking about. This process takes a little bit longer. Uh, the first process took about two minutes. This takes about five minutes. You know what, I'm just gonna move this on the opposite side so it looks a little bit better because we no longer need to follow this prompt because the next thing you're gonna do is actually just run the model. So we're gonna see over here, uh, it doesn't use that much gigs of RAM. It's only the first time. Okay, there you have it. This actually took about two minutes to get this going, but otherwise we are all set. Now, because we are using the 7B versus the 13B or anything else, we could just run their little program called chat script. I'm gonna hit enter on that and we're gonna see, look, the CPU is actually gonna be pinned to 100. Memory is gonna be around like a nine gigs, more or less. And there we have it, we have our prompt. We basically could ask it anything we want at this point, and it's um, AI generated. So, who was the first man on the moon? Let's do something simple like that. You can see it's gonna run. That was Neil Armstrong, and obviously that's correct. So, we know that it's pulling information and it's getting it correctly. Uh, when did he arrive? on the moon let's ask that question where it's referring to his previous answer there you have it so it gives you the date or the year that he landed on the moon but he knows that we're talking about neil armstrong because that's the first question we ask it so we're technically talking to an ai right now and it's responding correctly i didn't have to write the word neil armstrong again i didn't have to do a few other things but that's really cool but what Simon Wilson was talking about is that it's just not trained for certain things like this. So if I was to ask him, can you write an email telling my boss uh, I need a two-week vacation? Something like this. 
I don't think it's going to know how to respond. Certainly. That's all it gives me. It doesn't even give me the email. It just says, yes, I could do it. Yeah, that's it. And that's usually like the extent of the response. You could probably fine tune what you asked over here and probably have it forced to give you a response. But in general, this is the model that we have, which is a 7B. I would love to give this 13B a try, uh, which I don't have right now, but that might result in a better response. But for now, it is very simple to get the AI up and running. It took me maybe less than 10 minutes to get all this and filming a video at the same time. Now you could do what he has too. So instead of using an interactive prompt, you could also run the command like this, which model to use, uh, how many threads. Um, I don't know what N stands for, but the prompt that you want is over here. And he is actually using this from 13B, which I do not have. So asking the same question might not even result in an answer. So I'm gonna paste this in here. What are some good pun names for a coffee shop ran by beavers? I'm gonna hit enter and see if it responds. It might not even respond to me. There's the Northwest Lodgers Coffee Shop or perhaps Beaver Valley Coffee. Okay, that's it, very interesting. He gave me two answers, which kind of makes sense, but when you're using the 13B, you get a much better response on actual coffee name shops. Anyway, that is it. I did have a lot of fun with this. You could ask it a lot of stuff, but you do have to kind of train it your t yourself, like how I did um, who is the first man on earth, and then you've got to ask him more questions, and they'll go into details with that when I was testing the model. Um, as far as now goes, it's still not as good as ChatGPT3 because they are using a lot of people's information to build their models out. Uh, but it is something we could play around with and not have to have the restrictions of the API or paying more money or, yeah. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below or on my Discord. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.